I want to welcome you today to my message on deepening your relationship with God. Today we're going to talk about deepening, going deep with God. And so I want to welcome you to this message. This message is part of a series I'm doing called uh, Experiencing God, Experiencing uh, God. And so I'd like to begin uh, with a question. And the question is this, do you desire to experience God every day and in every way. I want you to think about that, all right? Do you desire to experience God every single day of your life and in every single way uh, of your life? Well, I'm pretty sure your answer is absolutely. That's what I want. And that really is the normal Christian life. I mean, uh, we ought to be experiencing God. I mean, every single day, day in every single uh, way. And, and, and for us to do that, listen, the main thing is to know and do God's will. The main thing is to know and do God's will. And so today we want to talk about this idea uh, of experiencing God uh, and doing his will and specifically uh, in how we need to relate to God uh, and for us to know God Uh, is to know his will, right? And to know God is to go deep with God. And so today I'm going to talk to you about uh, four different choices you have to make every day, okay? Every single day uh, to go deep uh, with uh, God. Now this uh, message is part of a special, what we call spiritual growth intensive, intensive. And uh, it's not just a teaching series, it's an intensive. And many of you are are part of this spiritual growth intensive. And I want to just encourage you, listen, you know, we have a book we're using uh, called Seven Realities of Experiencing God. I want to encourage you to be faithful in that. Uh, We're encouraging you to memorize uh, the Bible verses. I want to encourage you to be faithful uh, in that uh, area. In other words, I'm trying to encourage you, listen, hey, let's, let's put all we have into this, all right? It's, it's, it's going by fast, all right? We're already uh, at week uh, number four, all right? So things are moving along here, all right? So I want to encourage you, listen, go all in. Uh, go all in. Now, with that said, today we're going to look here in Exodus chapter 33. Exodus uh, chapter 33. And, um, and today we're going to be looking at a story uh, in the life of uh, Moses, and, uh, and so as we look at this, and we're going to be in Exodus 33, uh, 12 through 17, 12 through 17. And, um, and as we look at this, I want, I want to give you the context, all right? So I'm going to read it to you, but as I read it to you, I want you to know the context. So what's happening here is in Exodus 32 through 34, all right? So those uh, chapters, again, Exodus 32... 33 and 34, those three chapters, it records the story of the children of Israel rebelling against God and worshiping a golden calf. Now just imagine this. I mean, God has has taken them out of bondage and and, I mean, God has done miracles along uh, the way and now what do they do? Okay, they they turn uh, from the true God uh, to an idol. And they make up this, this golden calf, and they, and they begin to worship uh, this golden uh, calf. And what happens is God severely judged them, and they repented of their sin. I mean, I mean God wasn't going to have any part in this. He, he, meaning, he, you know, he was not going to allow them to worship some false uh, god. And, and he disciplined them. He, he judged them in a very severe uh, manner. Now, what did they do? They, they repented. They, they turned back to God, all right? They turned back to God. And it's so interesting that after all this turmoil, all that went on, all right, Moses meets with God. And that's what we are going to read about here today. He's meeting with God. And Moses poured out his heart asking, listen, to know God's way that he might know God and find grace. We're going to see it today. He's going to say, God, I want to know your way so I can know you and I can find your grace. 
And God, I love this, God assured Moses of his presence, his grace, and I love this part the most, that he knows Moses by name. He says, Moses, I know you by name. In other words, I mean, they had a, a deep, deep relationship. And quite frankly, they're going deeper. They're, they're going uh, deeper. And, and that's the Christian life that God has designed for all of us to experience God deeper and deeper as we uh, live uh, for him. So with that in mind, let's read Exodus 33, beginning to verse 12, down through verse 17. It says, Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you may say to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight. And consider that this nation is your people. And here's God's response. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. What an incredible conversation that we see here. And so part of this series, Experiencing God, is really to highlight the life of Moses. And this is one of the most significant uh, points in Moses' uh, life uh, where he's having to deal with this, this backslidden people that, he, that he's trying to that he's trying to lead, all right? I mean, the fact that they would, you know, he's actually, you know, uh, you know getting the Ten Commandments and all that kind of stuff, and, 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 and they become impatient, and, and, and they begin to, uh, you know, create a false god, a, a golden calf, and they begin to worship that golden calf, and God does judge them, and, and, they, and, and the good news is they turn uh, back to God. But Moses, at this critical point, has this kind of, you know, meeting with God to, to talk about uh, the situation. And, and Moses, again, he's just pouring out his heart to God. And, and I love what he says uh, here where he says, uh, show me now your way that I may know you. Show me now your way that I may know you. And God says to him, my presence is going to go with you. All right, my presence go with you. And I love Moses' attitude because I can relate to it. God, if you're not going I'm not going. Okay, in other words, I, Moses said, I don't want to go anywhere without you, God. And sure enough, that's how we all should, should uh, you know, live out our lives. Of course, as, as Christians, once we're saved, God is in us and, and we have his presence. But the whole idea here is that Moses wanted that assurance of God's presence uh, in his uh, life. And I just love the fact that, that uh, God said to him, Moses... I know you by name. I know you by name. Wow, what an incredible example of deepening your relationship with God. Now, with that said, let's talk about how to deepen your relationship with God. And uh, as we're doing this, I want to once again show you a diagram. And this diagram is the seven realities for experiencing God. The seven realities for experiencing God. And this uh, diagram comes from the book we're using uh, called The Seven Realities of Experiencing uh, God. And, uh, and this diagram shows these seven realities. And, uh, and so today, uh, we're looking, as you can see on the screen there, see the little shading there? It's kind of hard to see, but, but number two. See, see number, number two there uh, is shaded. And what we're going to talk today about is relationships relationship. Reality number two is we have to have a relationship with God. 
And, and to spell this out, experiencing God reality number two is this. God pursues a continuing love relationship with you that, listen, that is real and personal. I love this. Reality number two. God pursues a continuing love relationship with you that is real and personal. Wow. You're talking about experiencing God. I mean, it's real. It's personal. The relationship you have with God. Now, to do that, I want to talk about four choices to make every day. And the thing you got to understand is this. It's not automatic, all right? I mean, all relationships uh, require effort, right? I mean, if I'm going to have a, a, a close relationship with my wife, I, I got I to put something into it, right? I have, to, I have to put some effort into it. The same with my children, my grandchildren, uh, the people that I have the privilege of pastoring. Uh, you know, uh, any and all relationships, all right, require putting forth some effort. And, and it's no different with God uh, in the sense that we have to, you know, put forth some effort uh, to, to have this type of relationship uh, with God. But here's the good news. God wants that type of relationship. James 4, 8a says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. I mean, the very nature of God is if you draw near to him, listen, he will draw near to you. I mean, that is the nature of Almighty God. And so let's talk about these four choices to make every day. Four choices to make every day. Ready? Here we go. Number one, accept God's love every day. Accept God's love every day. I mean, you got to realize that, you know, the relationship you have with God uh, is a love relationship. And uh, we've already talked about this in a previous message. And it's based on God's love for you and your love for God. The fact that God loves us and that we are to love God. So accept God's love every day. And there's two things I want to uh, emphasize here, things you got to believe, all right? Now, I'm talking about accepting God's love, not just in your head, all right? I'm, I'm talking about in the heart. I'm talking about experiencing God, experiencing God. And experiencing God is that love that we have. And so, number one, believe that Jesus gave his life for you. Believe that Jesus gave his life for you. Part of accepting God's love every day is to believe that Jesus gave his life for you. I love 1 John 4, 9 through 10. I love this passage. It says, In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Praise God. And notice it says the love of God was manifested towards us. And then also in verse 10, it says, in this is love. In this is love. What's it talking about? What's been manifested that, that demonstrates God's love? What is the this is love? Well, the answer is the cross. The cross. The, the fact that, that Jesus Christ gave his life for us. Uh, God has sent his only begotten son of the world that we might live through him, that we might live through him. And why, why did he come? He came to be the propitiation for our sins. See, that's, that's kind of a fancy word. All right. What the idea behind propitiation is the, the substitute uh, for our sin. He, he atoned uh, for our uh, sin. And, and, and listen, this was a an act of love, right? That he gave himself for us. And I love that statement that we might live through him. He wanted us to live, not on our own, but through him. You got to believe that, okay? You got to believe that. And then number two, listen to this. Believe nothing can separate you from God's love. Now listen, the enemy is going to do everything possible to get you to doubt God's love. 
This is part of what we call spiritual warfare. Every Christian deals with this. All right. So, so if there have been times where you've doubted God's love, you know, welcome to the normal Christian life. All right. I mean, we've all been through it, particularly, you know, we'll go through a hard time or, or whatever. I mean, it's easy for the enemy to say, well, you know, if God really loved you. You know, he wouldn't let this, this go on in your, in your life, you know. But that's not true. God loves us. In fact, in Romans 8, 38 through 39, it says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I mean, what beautiful, beautiful words. I mean, nothing, it says, nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord. And so, listen, just know, no matter what we're going through, all right, and maybe today you're going through a hard time, you know, I get it, okay, I, 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 I get it, I understand, all right, uh, but listen, you got to believe nothing can separate you from God's love. And, and, and even when you're going through pain and, and problems and, and things of life, I mean, God loves you, all right, you, you got to cling to that, the love of God. This is the choice you make, right? It's a choice. You have, you have to make a decisive choice in your life because if you don't make that choice, okay, I can assure you you're not going to go deeper with God. But when you believe that Jesus gave his life for you, when you believe that nothing can separate you from the love of God, and listen, you accept God's love in your life every single day, you're going to go deep with God. Number two, Give God first place every day. Give God first place every single day. Matthew 6, 33. This is part of the most famous sermon ever preached, the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus preached that sermon. And in that sermon, he said in Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. But seek first the kingdom of God. Put, put him first in your life. Put, put him first. Put his righteousness first. I mean, I mean, know what God says is right and do it, all right? Put him first in your life. And, and this means to live, you know, with him number one, right? Make, make him number one. Make, make a choice. Make a choice that you're not going to let anything else come in front of uh, 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 God in your life. Now, let, let's get practical. Let's, let's talk about some practical aspects of putting uh, God first. And quite frankly, this could be kind of, a, kind of a lengthy list because the Bible actually describes uh, things that are first, okay, for things that we're to be doing like that show God is first. Uh, and I just want to highlight uh, three of them, all right? Again, this list could be longer. But number one, uh, give God first place in your day. And here's one way to do that. Have a daily quiet time. A daily quiet time. Now, basically what I'm talking about is every day have what I call an appointment with God. All right? A quiet time. And in this appointment, you know, you do two things. All right? Minimum two things. Number one, you have time in the Bible. All right? And then you have time in prayer. And, and mainly through the Bible, God speaks to you. And mainly in prayer, you speak to God. Now, I'm using the term quiet time. And this is tied to Psalm 4610a. Psalm 4610a. It says, be still and know that I am God. I, I mean, just, let, just let that roll over your heart today. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. You know, this is, honestly, this is one of the hardest things in the world for me to practice, this, this spiritual discipline of, of being still, okay? Steve Reynolds doesn't do too well being still, all right? But I've had to learn to discipline myself uh, in uh, this area. Be still. I, listen, take time to be still. Take time to be still and know God. 
to get to know God. And, and, and again, two things to do during your quiet time. Number one, uh, uh, search the Bible. Uh, I'm picking up those words from Acts 17, 11. Here the Bible says, these were more, uh, these were more fair-minded. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. And that they received the word with all readiness, and they searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. And boy, this is a compliment that uh, the Apostle Paul is uh, giving uh, to this church. The church is in a place called Berea, Church of Berea. And, uh, and basically he says, listen, you know, that church of Thessalonica, they're, they're an awesome church too, but, but listen, I noticed over here in Berea, boy, when I was there, they received the word with all readiness. I mean, I mean and, and, and this is one of the things I love about our church. I, I love to preach to our church. Uh, I mean, our church family, uh, you know, has such a, a, a readiness for the Bible, such a, such a desire uh, for the Word of God. But they didn't just, you know, get the Word in, 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 in public, in church. Uh, what they would do is they would search the Scriptures every day to make sure uh, what uh, was being taught was, was true. Because here's the deal. Listen, you're going to have to stand for God uh, on your own, all right? You're going to have to answer to God for yourself. And, uh, and I, you know, I, the bottom line is I'm your pastor and yeah, you ought to be able to trust me, and I believe I am trustworthy. I mean, I, I spend you know so much time, so much effort preparing uh, messages that I believe are biblical and, and correct. But but I'm not perfect, okay? I'm not perfect. And and God says you have a responsibility to go home and search your own Bible, all right, to make sure what I'm saying is true, all right. And they search the scriptures daily, daily. Part of what you do is you do a daily time in God's Word. And then listen, prayer, prayer. And I love Matthew 6, uh, where the Bible says, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. You see, we ought to have a, a, a time of prayer in uh and, you know, you, you can and should pray everywhere because the Bible says to pray without ceasing. But what I'm talking about here today in this message is a, a concentrated time where all you do is pray, meaning, you know, you pray as you go. You know, you, you, to me, like prayer is supposed to be like breathing. I mean, you're just, you're just trying to stay in touch with God all the time. But this is the idea of, you know, you go and you have a time with God where you just pray, all right? And he, and he talks here about, you know, finding a place. Go to your room, all right? Shut the door. What, what that means is find a, a secluded place, you know? And, uh, and, you know, you can figure out where that might be, just a place where you can have a quiet time, a quiet time with the Lord. Hey, make this a priority every single day. Every single day, have a daily quiet time. And then also another way to give God first place in your life is in your week, in your week. Attend a Sunday worship service. Attend a Sunday worship service. You see, God beautifully designed our lives. And God, listen, knows us and actually gave us kind of a, a flow to follow in life. And part of that life flow every week is to start your week worshiping God, all right, with other Christians, other people, church, go to church, all right? And, and, and God was so serious about it in Hebrews 10, 25, that he actually said, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. I mean, we're not, in other words, we're not to forsake it. We're to make it, a, make it a priority. And so you got to get in your mind, because I know our culture is built on like Monday being the beginning of the week, but that's not biblical. Sunday is of the biblical starting date of the week. And God says, the first thing I want you to do, I don't want you to forsake it. I don't want you to miss it. I want you at church, okay? I want you to be at church. 
And it's so important, the Bible says, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We're actually supposed to be saying, hey, I hope to see you at church. We're supposed to exhort each other, encourage each other to be faithful. And, and what do we do? Well, the Bible says in Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. I mean, we're to be letting God's word dwell in us. And, uh, you know, we're to be getting the wisdom and the teaching and the admonishing and, 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 and lifting up praise uh, to Almighty uh, God. Hey, give God first place by, by making uh, church attendance a priority, all right? And then another area which is so important is in your finances. Get, give in a God-honoring way. I mean, God is very specific when he says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. God is saying, listen, honor me with your stuff, your possessions. And, and, and when you have increase in your life, that means you, you, know, you get paid or whatever. The first thing you do is you worship me with giving. You give of the first fruits. The first fruits of your increase is to be given over to God. And, and the Bible says in Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It's so important to understand, you know, that God is looking at us. And, and I often say, you know, you can pretty much tell where a person is, uh, their value system with their time and with their treasure. I mean, those, those two, I mean, you can have all kinds of lip service about things, but bottom line, where, where the, they say rubber hits the road. I don't know if you ever heard that term or not. Rubber hits the road. Look at your calendar. And, and look at your, your, your finances, okay? And Jesus said, where you put your treasure, he said, that's where, you, where, where your heart is. And, and so be, be faithful in your giving. Uh, you know, be generous uh, in your giving. Uh, you know, be systematic in your giving. Be proportional. Uh, be a tither and give offerings over and above uh, the tithe. Hey, listen, this is a choice. You got, you got, you got, you got to choose What's going to be first in your life? But if you're going to go deep with God, he can't be second or third or fourth or fifth or sixth. He's got to be number one in your life. All right, so how to deepen your relationship with God. Choice number one, accept God's love every day. Choice number two, give God first place every day. All right, you ready for two more? Here they go, all right? Choice number three, Obey God's will every day. Obey God's will every day. So as we're moving through experiencing God, uh, the whole idea of this is knowing and doing God's will, right? And hopefully what we're doing so far is really starting to have an influence on you. I know it's having an influence on me. Ho hopefully it's impacting your life. And the whole idea is, God is going to reveal his will. You have to obey it. Now, realize this. God's love language is obedience. God's love language is obedience. Now, I'm kind of taking off on a kind of a cultural thing. Maybe you don't even know about it. A lot of people do. A lot of people don't. All right. There's this, and I, and I think it's, I think it's really important. I, I, you know, when I first heard about this, I thought, you know, is this like some cycle babble or whatever? But I don't think it is. I, th I think it's very, very uh, important. And that is, when you communicate to people, you want them to feel loved, feel loved. And uh, and the whole idea there is, there's different love languages, you know, and. Uh, and, and, and this is the idea that, you know, some people feel love by words of affirmation. Some people feel love uh, by, you know, quality time. Uh, some people feel love by, by gifts. I mean, I mean, you know, different people feel love in different ways, right? In other words, I mean, you can take your person that's close to you, your spouse or your kids or whoever, all right? And you might be thinking, I'm showing love for them. You know, I buy them a, a gift every week or whatever. 
But you know what? Some people, that doesn't mean anything to them, all right? It, it, it doesn't. But some people, uh, that means the world to them. And it doesn't even have to be expensive. The, the gift isn't, you know, that it costs a lot. What the gift says to them, you thought about me. You, 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 you saw that and you thought about me. And it, might, it, it could have been free, all right, to be honest with you. It might not cost you anything. But it was a gift, something you gave them, all right? Uh, the point I'm trying to make is we're all different. But listen, God, what's, what's his love language? How, how does he know you love him? He, Jesus told us, if you love me, keep my commandments. I mean, Jesus says, hey, you want to know my love language? If you love me, keep my commandments. I mean, that, that is the bottom line how God knows we love him, that we obey him. And so here's the question, and I want you to think about this right now. Listen, listen to me. All right, this is a really important question. All right, here it is. Is there something in your life that you know God is asking you to do, but you are just not doing it? All right, I want to say it again. I want, I want it to sink in. I want you to think now. Is there something in your life, something in your life, that you know, you know God is asking you to do it. But listen, for whatever reason, you're just not doing it. Hey, listen, you're missing out on the blessing, the blessing. Because James 1.25 says, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. I, I love that verse, James 1.25. And the perfect law of liberty uh, is the Bible, God's Word, the perfect book that sets us free, the book, the book of liberty. And the Bible says if you'll continue in that and not, and not forget it, now, don't be a forgetful hearer, but you are a doer, be a doer, hey, God says you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed. Hey, don't you want the... You know, I think about this. I want God's full load of blessing. Right? I mean, I mean, you know, one of the saddest things maybe when I get to heaven is to know, wow, you know, I missed out on some of God's blessing, you know, because of my own rebelliousness. I don't, I don't, oh, dear God, help that not to be true. I don't want that in my life, you know. And, and listen, he wants to bless you, all right? So, so listen, obey God. What if, what if he's telling you to do? Do it. Do it. And then lastly, as we close, choice number four. And it's a choice. Enjoy God's presence every day. Enjoy God's presence every day. You see, in John 17, Jesus was praying. He was praying to the Father. And this is the longest recorded prayer of Jesus. And what Jesus told us in that prayer in John 17 is this, a relationship with Jesus is a joyful relationship. A, a relationship with Jesus is a joyful relationship. John 17, 13, listen to what Jesus says. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Jesus is praying to the Father, and he says, Father, I'm in the world, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm in this world. And listen, my heart, Jesus says, is I want my joy fulfilled in them. I, I want my joy to be fulfilled in them. I mean, listen, make a choice every day to experience the joy of the Lord. And listen, with that, do not let anxiety rob you of joy. You know what? I'll be honest with you. I, I think these are the most anxious times uh, of my life as far as what people are dealing with. There's so much anxiety in this world, all right? So much anxiety. And, 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 and anxiety robs us of joy. It robs us of joy. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 4, to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Paul says rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in Jesus. And he repeats it. Again, I say rejoice. And then listen, he says, okay, Paul knew, all right? 
e even in the first century, people dealt with anxiety, right? Anxiety is nothing, nothing new, right? Nothing new. And he told them, listen, be anxious for nothing. God, God says, listen, handle your anxiety. Be, be anxious for nothing, nothing. He says, listen, rather than be anxious in everything by prayer, and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. In other words, rather than, 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 than be anxious, pray. Rather than worry, let your request be made known to God. That's the joy place. Bring it to God. And the Bible says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ. Jesus. Hey, listen, I don't know what's on your heart today. What are you anxious about? You know, it's hard not to be anxious, right? But listen, that robs us of the joy, right? That robs us of the joy. So part of going deeper with God, all right, is having a relationship with him that rather than being anxious, we find joy in him and we take our anxiety and we bring it to God and we put our trust in God, all right? So what do you need to lift up to the Lord today in prayer? What, what do you need to say to him? Let your request be made known unto God. Hey, God wants you to experience him, all right? But you know what? You got to go deep. You got to go deep. And deep and deep and deep, you got to keep on going deeper and deeper and deeper in your relationship with Him. And as we close today, you got to make a choice. Actually, four choices. And the choice is this accept God's love every day. You got to believe it. You got to believe His love. You got to give God first place every day. You can't let anything get in front of Him. Listen, you got to obey God's will every day, every day. Whatever he says to you to do, you do it. And then lastly, enjoy God's presence every day. Deepen your relationship with God. Again, experiencing God, reality number two. Here it is. God pursues a continuing love relationship with you that is real and personal.